Well, hello, friends. Welcome to Montrose Anglers. Hey, this is Nolan Egbert, and uh, I am so excited to bring to you the second annual On the Vice 2021. As you guys can imagine, uh, there were a few doubts that we might be able to bring this to you over what we've been through over the last several months. But with a little of in ingenuity and uh, the creative help of Drew Lowen Creative, here we are. And uh, man, I am so excited uh, to bring this to you over the next several weeks. You know, when we bought the shop in 2017, <clears throat> we committed to bringing you quality products uh, and services and, and just knowledge of uh, the great rivers that we have around here, the Gunnison, the uh, Uncompagre, and the Cimarron River. And, um, but you know, at the same thing, as, as a culture, as at the shop of, of lifetime learners, we wanted to provide you guys with resources, educational resources, as, as we learned uh, we want to share what we're learning with you. And, uh, you know, by no means do we know everything, are we experts at everything, but we're constantly learning and we want to share, share it with you guys. And uh, we want to be able to help you access these incredible rivers that we have around us. And out of that has come on the Vice fly time demo days. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to share with you the lineup that we have for the next several weeks. Starting today, uh, we have the Young Guns, which will be, it, today will be a little bit unique because we'll have two tires. And uh, generally, well, all the rest of the days we'll have one tire. And, um, but today we have two tires, uh, Montrose Angler's own, Caleb Egbert and Preston Roberts. Uh, on next week, uh, the 16th of January, we'll have Jordan Haran, and uh, on the 23rd, we'll have Joel Evans. Uh, January 30th, we have Bill Francos with us. February 6th, we have Alec Gerbeck with us. February 13th, Jay Kepler. February 20th, Tim Jacobs. And February 27th, Dwayne Redford. Uh, and March 6th, Gene, uh, Jeff Dean. And Finishing it off will be Bill Finstermaker. And uh, so, man, as you can see, we've got a great lineup of tires to uh, share their, their tricks and their trade. Um, so just today, so you know how things will go, we'll have a, uh, and each week we'll have a uh, Q&A at the conclusion of each tire's time. Um, and uh, with that, first up, we've got Caleb Egbert. Caleb uh, is my youngest of four kids and uh, was a main cat one of the main catalysts to the, of buying our shop and he helps me in um, more ways than I could share with you. Um, he uh, is our head guide, he works in the shop, uh, he keeps me on my toes, he, he is our chief cool officer, you know, keep keeping us, uh, keeping us straight and uh, keeping it, keeping me relevant. But, um, uh, you know, he, he's brought me uh, great pride, pleasure, uh, and some heartburn in watching him grow into a young, fine man and a great, a good fly fisherman and a good fly tire. He's got many gifts and skills and, and, and talents. And one of them that he's going to share with you this morning is fly tying. So, Caleb, it's up to you, man. Sweet. Well, I'm super happy to be here, super happy to uh, tie some of my local flies that I've been using on the surrounding waters for a while and uh, that have done really good for me. Uh, I've been fly fishing for about uh, eight years and tying for about seven and a half, so quite a rough, rough couple years starting tying. I think everybody goes through that. Um, but yeah, I think I've gotten a little better and uh, it's always a good sign when you start catching fish on flies you're tying. So I'm going to start off with a little betas pattern. Um, it's called Emerging Glass Betas. Um, it's a great bug, use it on the Gunnison a lot, use it at, at our local tailwater Paco on the Uncompagre. Um, did really well on this fly in the spring in March and beginning of April on the Gunnison for the BWO hatch. And um, yeah, it's a really fun pattern. Um, I use, um, I'll start off tying on this fly on a fire hole 718 in a size 20. Um, you can tie this fly, uh, fire hole, if you've ever used fire hole hooks, they run a little big. 
So if you use Daiichi or Umpqua, it's going to be about an 18 to a 22. Um, but in the fire hole sizes, I'll tie this from a 20 to a 24. Um, already loaded in the vise, I got a um, killer caddis glass bead um, in crystal. And loaded in my bobbin, I got uh, UTC and 70 denier and light olive. So I'm going to go ahead and start tying my thread, wrapping down the body. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and start by tying in our Coq de Leon as our tail. This is a molted color that I tie uh, the tail for. I'm going to go ahead and measure that. I don't like my tail to be too long in these betas patterns. Um, it's just a little smaller than the length of the body. Good, I'm gonna start wrapping this down the bend of that hook. Um, I'm gonna check it, I like it. Um, you know, I'm kind of particular with how I tie my flies. I want it to look really clean. Um, so if, you know, if I don't like it, I'll go back in and chop it off. All right. So uh, as you see, I wrapped this fiber up um, the bend of the hook and we're, I do, for this fly, I'm going to leave quite a bit of space um, for that bead to slide around because this fly, I'm going to actually be sliding that bead back. Um, so leave a little bit of space so you have room um, to slide that bead. So next, I'm going to grab some microtubing and olive brown. Um, love this material. It's really good for a rib on uh, these smaller flies, um, also for bodies, for midges, and um, great body for a caddis. So, go ahead, slide that under my thread. Now, I don't want to leave too much tag, but I am going to leave a little bit of tag because it's a little easier to trim this stuff clean if you leave just a little bit of tag. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull that tight as I wrap that down the body to the tail. Keep, as you know, mayflies have a real slim body, so we're going to want to just keep that slim profile um, to mimic that bug as best as we can. So as you can see, I left this um, pretty decent sized tag because it's a little easier to pull it tight and trim it, and that'll suck that right underneath the, uh, the thread wraps. Go ahead, do a wrap over that butt. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tight. And this is gonna become my rib on this fly. Um, pull this really tight. If you don't, it's gonna lay out and you're not gonna have that nice clean segmentation as you can see we got going on. Um, I did about five to six wraps here. Um, we really just wanna keep a nice um, just get a nice clean rib with space in between. So I tie that off. I'm going to go ahead and pull this back. Pull it tight. Trim so you don't have any tag hanging out. All right. Now we're going to tie in our legs, and it's also going to be our wing case. Um, this is going to be Vivas Body Quill and um, Olive. I'm a big fan of this material. Again, I use this. Um, it's a little easier to tie for um, betas and mayfly legs um, because it's, it's more of a cord. Um, it's, it is about three different fibers, and uh, so it really makes a nice buggy legs. So now, as you can see, I have quite a bit of rim in front of that bead. Um, I'm going to slide that back. I'm going to push it with my fingernail to slide that back over that thread dam. I made with my material where I tied off, and I'm gonna jump my thread in front of it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple, do a couple wraps in front of that bead to secure it. Now I'm gonna grab both of this Viva's body quill. I'm gonna pull it over in front of that bead. Tie it in, go ahead, and now you're gonna separate. You can already see these, this, this body quill kind of separate, and you can see the three um, kind of the three diff 
different fibers that make that really nice buggy mayfly leg look. Um, I think it's a little easier, as you know, um, most betas patterns cons legs consist of floral fiber. And I just think this is a little easier, a little quicker, and has a little bit of flash, um, which I really like for my mayfly uh, legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my whip finish. Make sure you don't capture any of those legs. Just clean up, nice head. Go ahead, let's trim our thread out. Now before we cut the legs, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna be using uh, Loon UV Clear Fly Fish Thin. I'm just gonna do a little drop on my base, and I'm gonna get my bodkin. Grab it, get my light ready, and I'm just gonna do a very slim coat over that wing case and onto the head of the fly. This is gonna be my base, um, my base epoxy. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of more. I like to put it, I like to take my time and put it on my base and use my bodkin because it's, I can be a little bit more direct with where I wanna put it. Smooth that out, hit it with my light. Perfect, I got a nice um, little bubble um, that's gonna go over that wing case. Now I'm gonna flip my fly upside down and do the same thing just on the bottom. I'm gonna drop it onto that bottom side of the bead. I'm gonna drag it in front onto those thread wraps. I'm gonna hit it with my light to cure it. All right, and that, we're gonna come in here and trim our legs and we will have a finished fly. I like to stroke all of them back together. And I'm gonna go about midway through the body and cut them so they're even. Um, and then you have these two nice legs. If, you, if your cord hasn't separated yet, you can put your fingernail, a little trick I've seen, put your fingernail on here and just flick it and those legs are gonna splay out really nice. And that is uh, my emerging glass betas. Um, yeah. Fun pattern, um, works really well. Um, that glass bead, I think, does a good job of showing, presenting itself as a little air bubble um, as these betises and these mayflies are emerging. Um, yeah, fun little pattern, uh, done really well on it. I don't know if you guys wanna pass it around, if you wanna see it, perfect. Any questions or anything? Are we waiting for the questions at the end? For the end, yeah. All, all questions? Okay. Tell them to put them in the comments, though, if you have them now. Okay, yeah. Put them in, have any questions about uh, that last fly tied, go ahead and put them in the comments, and we will uh, get to them as soon as we can. All right. Next fly we're going to tie is uh, my Clinky Sally. Um, Little yellow Sally Dry, um, tie it on a fire hole 315 size 16. Um, 16 and 18 are probably what I tie it on the most. Um, this is a, a clink hook, um, so I really like this for dries, and uh, especially the yellow Sally. you give that? I do. He said he likes it. Should I order some more? Okay. Sweet. Thank you, sir. All righty. 
let's go ahead and hop into this next fly. Um, like I was saying, this is the Clinky Sally, um, little yellow Sally dry um, on a clink hook. We're gonna start off with, um, as I use actually, I'm gonna sh I like this Vivas body quill a lot, um, and I don't use it just as legs. Um, I use it, also use it for a body material. Um, today I'm gonna be starting this fly off in a Vivas body quill in this kind of yellow gold color. Um, for my body. So I'm going to go ahead and start my wraps right behind the, oh, it already broke. The struggle of body quill. You're not the only one who breaks through <laughs> All right. Let's try that again. Start our thread behind the eye of the hook. We're going to go ahead and start doing wraps down. Um, when I'm tying on these clink hooks, I like to actually reposition my hook in the vise so gravity helps me out a little bit. Because when you're trying to practically wrap vertically, your threads are going to keep on slipping. So a little tip, if you're tying on these big bend hooks and um, move that and let gravity help you out a little bit. So I'm going to tie this thread almost all the way down until you get that bend to the hook point. Um, reason I do that is because these hooks are, they have this huge bend and so you want your wing to be sitting up top but you want the body of that dry to be underneath the water. Um, especially if you've seen yellow sallies after they've been in the water a little bit, the tails are going to drop down, their wings are going to be trying to get off the water. And um, so it kind of gives a realistic profile of a, a yellow sally trying to get out of the water. Next, we're going to grab Vivas hollow tinsel in red, and it's on size small. I'm going to cut off just a in couple inches of this material. I'm going to tie that in at the very bottom. This is going to be my little hot spot, my little red butt that yellow sallies often have. Do a couple wraps over that and transition my thread up above. Um, I'm now going to do a couple touching wraps with this red tinsel up the body. So I did probably half a dozen wraps or so, and I'm just gonna catch that one time so we don't have this big butt or this uh, body quill is a little translucent, so you don't want to have much of a different color in that um, or it's gonna show up a little brighter. Let's go ahead, and now we're just gonna build our body with this body quill. Just touching wraps, I'm gonna wrap up until you get kind of to the flat part of this hook and I'm going to go one more time back down um, just to build a nice slim body for this yellow sally. So once I went down again and back up I'm going to reposition my hook in my vise so I can see it a little easier. You all can probably see that a little easier as well. And now I'm going to whip finish um, this body quill off. Now I'm going to be changing back, uh, I'm going to be changing my thread to UTC uh, 70 digit near in yellow. Alrighty, and before we start tying in that, we're going to get a little bit more of loon thin, and we're going to coat this body, um, so it just has a nice, flashy, just a very thin layer though, we don't want too much, 
um, just to make that, that body quill pop. I'm just going to run my bodkin up and down with a little bit of this epoxy. Go ahead. When I like, it looks pretty even on all sides, just a real thin coat. I'm going to hit that with my light. Make sure it's all cure before we start tying. All right, so now we have our, uh, practically our body done. Now we're gonna work on the, the wing and then the head of this fly. So go ahead, and I'm gonna start tying this UTC, um, 70 denier in yellow, right behind the eye and just, um, just a little bit past the hook point. I'm gonna tie that. We are going to get uh, CDC puffs in white. Um, CDC will work as well, um, but I like these puffs a little better for these wings because it's gonna. F what we want is we're also gonna have a wing case on top and kind of a secondary wing, but this wing's really gonna fluctuate in the water really nicely, which will present it as um, a wing trying to get off the water, um, moving a little bit. I'm gonna thin this wing out just a little bit. Don't want it too big. Alrighty, when I get it at about an amount that I like, I'm gonna go ahead and tie that in so it's just passing, barely passing the body of, or the length of this hook. As you can see right there, I'm gonna come in and trim the excess off. Wrap over that material. Next, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of crystal flash over that wing and uh, kind of sandwich it between that and our second wing, which is also gonna work as a wing case. Go ahead, half it. Lay that just right on top. Do some wraps back. Perfect, just like that. I'm gonna cut this crystal flash just a little past the wing. Um, now I'm going to transition to my um, w second wing, wing case, um, and I'm gonna be using CDC in light yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and strip some of this body off. Um, I don't want to, I don't wanna be tying in the super thick part of that stem. Um, just want a little thinner, it'll keep the profile a little smaller and um, a little bit more flexible. So as you can see, I already stripped off majority of that feather um, and just got the tip left. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and tie that flat. Let's tie that in again. Tie that flat right on top of that CDC puff. Perfect, it is a little long, but that's all right. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna trim it up actually. So it's got a nice kind of stonefly wing profile. I'm gonna go ahead and just do an even cut across, and then I'm gonna come in and kind of smooth out round the sides on both sides of that feather. Uh, just cut some of those longer fibers I didn't get. Perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of push that up a little bit. That yellow CDC also works as a good um, kind of indicator of where you're gonna be able to see that a little easier than that white puff sitting on top of the water. Um, next, we're gonna grab some dry fly hackle, grizzly, and extra small. Um, 
I'm gonna pick out a nice feather that I like that's gonna fit perfect onto this hook. Again, I'm gonna trim this feather to get kind of that fuzzy section of that hackle feather off. And I got that bare, I'm gonna pull some of those fibers off so I got a bare stem that I can tie um, it in on a little easier. Go ahead, tie that feather in on the top of that hook. Now I'm just gonna clean, make a nice clean head for that feather to lay on really nice and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some Zappa Gap. I'm just gonna barely touch it to secure that hackle. I like the brush a little better than the squeeze bottle. Just a small layer of Zappa Gap. Put this hackle in my hackle pliers. I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping this hackle up to the eye of the hook. So I got two. At this point, it's also a good time if you like to throw some small rubber legs in on this fly, it's a great time to tie those in. But today, I'm just going to leave it with some hackle. I'll clean that up. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish this fly. And I'll go in and trim it to what I like. Pull that tight. I'm gonna come in here and cut my thread off. Um, that is all right, some of these fibers are off the bottom side of that hackle, but what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna come flip it upside down and I'm gonna cut the hackle off on the bottom of this hook. Um, I do this because it is a clink hook and so I don't want that, I want that body to be completely underneath the water and I don't want the, the hackle to be keeping the body up. Just do some trimming. Looks pretty good. All right, and I'm just gonna do one touch up on the bottom where I just trimmed, put a little bit of Zappa Gap again. Just a very small coat. Secure that hackle. And that is uh, the Clinky Sally. Um, yeah, I've done really good on this on the lower. Um, I float that a lot, and I think the slimmer profile and the clink hook does a little better with that CDC puff. I like it. It kind of pulses and fluctuates in the water, so it looks like a wing trying to get out of the water. Um, yeah, it's done really well for me. Really like it, and uh, fun, small pattern, pretty easy, and... Uh, yeah. What size hook is that? This is a size 16, um, but it's a fire hole, which usually range a little bigger than um, your normal like umqua hook. So, little 14 um, compared to other hooks. But I tie it in a, a 16 and an 18 for fire, if I'm using a fire hole hook. All right. We're doing good on time? Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'm going to clean this stuff up a little bit.
some switch threads for my next fly. Get some of this junk out of the way. This next fly I'm going to be using um, UTC uh, 140 denier in a dark brown. All right. Let's, uh, move this material. This next one's going to be um, stone that I've been messing around over COVID, giving it the COVID stone. Um, Name, um, probably temporary, but thought it was fitting, you know. So we're gonna go ahead, I got a Firehole 839, size eight. This is gonna be a bigger stone um, in the vise, and I already got it loaded with a tungsten lucent bead and coffee. Um, really like this bead for this fly. Go ahead, I'm gonna slide that bead back, and I'm gonna start my thread right behind the eye. Go ahead, cut my tag. I'm gonna be using a Baird Sexy Floss um, Copper Brown Medium by MFC. Really like these legs for um, stone flies. Um, if you've ever used any other leg material, you've probably found out some of it, some of the Sexy Floss can have big curls in it. And so this is probably the most consistent material I've had that keeps a straight profile, straight leg. Go ahead, I'm gonna half this over my, my thread. I'm gonna tie it in up top. I'm gonna split, I'm gonna wrap one side up. I don't wanna wrap it all the way to the eye because I still want that leg to be kicked out. I wanna have some separation between those legs and not super close together. All right, we got those tied in. Come in here. You can cut these legs however you want. Um, I like to be about, almost about two inches or so, maybe a little smaller. You can always go back and trim up at the end. Um, go ahead, I'm just gonna wrap down, create the body, and I'm going to whip finish. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect, you can throw a half hitch in there. I'm going to slide my bead up over where those legs I just tied in at. And I'm going to attach my thread again, starting right behind that bead, and just tie all the way down the body. I'm actually going to go pretty far down to the beginning of the bend. Um, cut my tag. I'm now going to add a little bit of wire. Um, yeah, I use this stone a lot during the high water um, months and uh, during the salmon fly hatch, of course, and then a lot in town of Montrose just to, um, to get me down, but also there's a ton of stone flies in town and um, fish seem to really like it. So I'm gonna go back over my lead wraps one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch that off. This is gonna help me just build a little bit of a taper on this stone. I know it's not super pretty, but neither are stone flies. So we got that nice bulk of wire that's gonna help us get us down. And I also like to keep a little gap between my wire and my bead because I want to, I'm gonna be putting in a dubbing loop and uh, don't want that dubbing loop to sit really high on top of my fly. I want it to slide down a little bit. So um, I'm going to add in a, just a little dubbing ball at the bend of this hook um, to keep my legs kicked out. Um, it's a little trick I've learned and watched. So go ahead. I'm going to just slide just a little bit of dubbing on there. And right on the bend of that hook, I'm going to tie in just to make a little ball of dubbing. I'm 
Go ahead. So I got that little ball as you can see right here and I'm going to tie in my legs. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the antennas on the top. Half it, wrap it, pull one to one side, the other. So we got that splayed out and then you can tie it down to that dubbing loop and that dubbing loop will keep those legs and kicked out. Just like so, I'm gonna bring them down together even. Cut them, that one's splayed out a little bit, pull it. All right. Go ahead, I'm gonna just do a couple wraps over those lead wraps. Um, secure them. I'm gonna go all the way back down to where I just tied my legs in, and I'm going to be using Flyfish Foods, small stonefly chenille on coffee black. Um, really like this material for all, for all my stoneflies. Um, keeps it slim, but it's easy to taper. And um, yeah, it's really nice material. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna kind of pull the fibers off of the beginning of that chenille. So I'm just tying in the, kind of the yarn that's binding it all together. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my thread all the way back up. Um, I'm gonna go throw a hitch in. I'm gonna pull my kind of bobbin holder over and I'm just gonna use my rotary vise to wrap this body. So I'm just gonna wrap it all the way up, cover over those lead wraps. We wanna start seeing a taper be built with that chenille over that lead wraps. Uh, not a huge taper, just a little, kind of just a little bulk to it. Go ahead, tie this chenille off. Cut it clean. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up before I start my dubbing loop and before I tie my legs in. So I'm just going to tie that in here. Throw some, lead or throw some thread wraps behind that bead. I'm tying my legs on both sides right in the middle, right behind that bead. Perfect. Um, do the same thing, half it over your thread, wrap down. Awesome. And before I tie, start my dubbing loop, I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and I'm gonna trim those legs free so they're not all in my way. And if they're not, if they're kind of sticking close to the body, that's all right, because um, this dubbing loop's gonna keep them kicked out. So I'm gonna wrap my thread I'm trying to get rid of that. All right, I'm gonna put my thread at the back where I ended that chenille, and I'm gonna start my dubbing loop. It can be a little hard sometimes with all these. Golly. Good, do a couple wraps to get that dubbing loop. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna throw my thread up um, behind that bead. Throw a half hitch in. Just like so. I'm gonna get my dubbing twister. I'm gonna slide that in there and I'm Meanwhile, I'm going to create my dubbing lip. Um, I don't know if y'all will be able to see this. Yeah, it might be easier for this camera. Um, this is a little trick. I've been tying, I was tying this fly just in with a soft hackle feather. Um, and then Charlie Craven did this video of his new fly, the 
Darth Prince, maybe, um, and really liked this idea that he did. And he created a dubbing loop using uh, Cocktail Leone and just a, you know, either an ice dub or um, any type of dub that has a little bit of flash in it. So I'm, today I'm going to be using the Arizona Diamond dub. This is in a pheasant tail color. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of go through these fibers to get it nice and even. Um, so I have all my fibers going this, the direction that I want them. I'm going to go ahead and lay this on my cutting board or on my bead magnetic board and build this composite loop. I'm just separate it. I don't want it super thick. I just want it, I just want those flashy fibers to be seen. Um, now the next trick um, can be a little tough. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a cocktail and feather. I'm going to trim off the fuzzy stuff, pull, strip it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this feather and I'm going to just get those fibers straight. So they're just poking straight out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to almost lay that right over my dubbing loop. I can get a good shot. I'm gonna cut those off and just lay those on top of that dubbing loop. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of this feather. I'm going to Trim. Oh, make sure they're all going the same direction. I'm gonna do just a little bit more of this feather on in that dubbing loop. Alrighty, so I don't know if you can see this or not, but I have my dubbing on, on the bottom and then I have this um, feather up top. So what I'm gonna do is uh, if you have a clip, that's nice, but if you just are real soft with it, you can hold that in your hand. I'm just gonna open that dubbing loop real big and I'm gonna slide that in there. Um, now I'm gonna come on this back side. You don't have to, but I'm just gonna trim it a little bit. Cause we really just want that. The tapered side of the feather to be pointing out. We're going to go ahead, and now I'm just going to pull this out just a little bit. I'm going to start twisting my dubbing loop up. Doesn't look like much, but we're going to comb this out. And we're going to have a real buggy collar we're about to tie in. Take your time, get these fibers nice and plucked out. I'm using a stone faux uh, tool. It's kind of a combo tool. It has a small comb and a little piece of Velcro on the other side. Um, use the Velcro a lot. It just kind of plucks those fibers out of there. All right, just get it, these last touches nice and clean. So as you can see, I got this really nice dubbing loop. I got this feather coming out. I got these, this bronze flash on there um, and the synthetic material poking out, which is really nice. Gives it a really buggy look. And when I'm gonna start wrapping 
this dubbing loop around. I'm gonna do two wraps behind the legs. Then I'm gonna jump it between the legs. And now I'm going to stroke these, the front legs back. I'm just gonna do one wrap between the legs and now I'm gonna hop, jump it in front of the legs and right behind that bead. Stroke those fibers back. Do one more just to get it nice and secured. Get my thread in there. Tie that dubbing leaf off. I'm gonna pull these legs so they're not both just straight back. So we got some movement in them. All right, looks good. Let me go ahead. I'm gonna add just a little bit of UV thin. I'm just gonna add it just right on my thread. You can do zap a gap or whatever. Just a little head cement almost. Um, right behind that bead, secure, lock everything in. I'm gonna grab my whip finish. Whip it off. I'm gonna come in, cut that thread. And then before we're done, um, oh yeah, I need to, I'm gonna hit that too, to cure that resin on there. It's really buggy right now, stuff's going everywhere, stuff's poking out, that's all right. We're gonna go in here and we are gonna brush it out really nice and uh, get all those fibers kind of stroked back. Um, get anything trapped, that's when we wrap. Go back, I'm just gonna use this Velcro side and just really be pretty aggressive with it. And stroke those fibers back. Um, again, I'm gonna try to keep these legs a little separated. As you can see, they got a little uneven when I trimmed them. So I'm gonna come in here, pull them all the way up again. Trim them again, now we got a little bit more even legs. Um, all right, and um, yeah, you have a finished fly, you get your legs poking out, you got a nice buggy collar um, that's gonna move a lot in the water. You got a nice um, tapered body, legs that are gonna be um, wiggling around in the water, and uh, that's the that's the COVID stone. <laughs> Pass that around. Real buggy, really heavy um, pattern. Use it on the Gunnison. Use it in town during the high water months. Um, tied in a little smaller size in a golden color, and uh, could do do well. That's a size eight. It's a bigger stone. Um, I think that's a that's all I. I think that's all I got. Ready? All right. Well, we're gonna have a brief Q and A for Caleb. Anybody from the floor or anybody online watching us, uh, give us a question on uh, in the comment field. But guys, what? Got any thoughts, any ideas, any questions for Caleb? On one uh, bait issue, uh -huh. the glass B, you don't take your UV over, do you take it over the back side of the B to taper that or not? Yeah, I do it a little bit, um, but I like to, I'll just, I keep it almost a good 
just keep it on that body quill. So, because that body quill is not going to be underneath that bead, and so you're still going to have this little ramp. And so I'll just keep it on there, kind of for that thorax, for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I do, I do keep it all the way. Yeah, just have that smooth Top body, dry. that smooth wing case. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh yeah. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Any other questions online? Anybody? What vice is that? This is a peak. Um, yeah, the vice I'm using is a peak. Um, I don't know the exact like. There's like a weird number combination. It's a peak rotary. Yeah. We can, yeah. We have a. Uh, we just got a couple in. We got the rotary and the non-rotary today in stock again. And everything I used here, you can you can buy here at Montrose Anglers. Um, yeah. Any more questions, fellas? I failed to uh, intro. share with you guys that we're fixing to losing. We've had him since last March, and uh, which. That was a, a really a blessing with of COVID to have him around for such a long time. But he's heading back. He's a junior at Wheaton College studying business. He's a cornerback on their football team. And um, yeah, leaves next Sunday. So unfortunately, but he'll be back soon, right? Yeah, in a couple of months. But I haven't fished in, since I was probably in middle school. So. It was nice to fish the fall and fish the spring. So. Got to duck hunt a little bit. Got to duck hunt, yeah. It was uh, ready to be back, but for sure uh, it was nice to be here. Couldn't complain during COVID. All right. Hey, uh, thanks, Caleb. That was great. And we're going to uh, break right now uh, for a short intermission as uh, our next tire gets ready.
Hey, welcome back uh, from Intermission. We're ready for our second um, tire, who is one of our own, uh, Preston Big P Roberts. Preston's 21 as well and uh, has studied professional photography at Colorado Mountain College. He's not blood, but I would uh, totally take him and accept him. And uh, I first met uh, uh, Preston coaching football here at the high school, Montreux High School. And uh, he uh, grabbed my heart. Any good offensive lineman is near and dear to my heart. So, um, but uh, he's, it, he, he too has given me, it's been giving, giving me great pleasure to watch him grow as a young man, as a fly fisherman, as a fly tire. And uh, he helps a lot around the shop. He guides for us. And uh, uh, a lot of the photographs you see on our website and uh, our social media page uh, is pr our, our Preston's handiwork. So uh, with that, you know, he's got many talents like, uh, like Caleb and one of them being fly tying that he's constantly working on and refining and uh, look forward to seeing what he's got for us. So with that, Preston. Are you ready? I am ready. All right, brother. So welcome, guys. So I have been fly fishing for about six years. I think we're going on six years. And um, I started to tie pretty much right after that. Honestly, Caleb was the one that really got me into it with a couple of other people. Um, so yeah, and I'm gonna be tying on peak rotary vice, same one as Caleb. Might look a little bit different, just so I have different attachments, but yeah. So for this first fly we're gonna be tying, it is gonna be my Jurassic Caddis pattern. And it's gonna be tied on a Firehole 315, size 16. So it really, it's a little bit bigger than a 16. Um, but I tie this pattern all the way from 14 to 12, not any bigger than that, but yeah. And then for the bead, we're going to be using a Firehole Midnight Green non-slotted tungsten bead. This one's a 2.5 millimeter, but as you tie bigger, you go bigger. So, awesome. For the thread, I'm using 70 denier and um, UTC black. So let's get this thread started. And I just like to build a little bit of bulk up right here. Right, kind of like the two thirds point of the body. And we are gonna take some synthetic quill body from Hairline. This color is Blue Wing Olive. And we are gonna tie this in. I like to go pretty far down on this and then we're going to take our thread we're going to wrap it back up to the top right where we tied that last quill in now i'm going to take some utc pearl tinsel it's a size medium sometimes i like to use the largest to cover it up faster but we're being fancy today so So right at the same point that we tied in that quill body, we're going to make our way down the shank. And once we get there, you really want to make sure that you cover the whole body with black. It's okay if some's shining through, but I like to cover it all. If you notice, the body is a lot thicker right now than right up next to that bead. And that's good because we're going to throw a dubbing loop in right up there. So I like to build that body up just a little bit. Now we're going to take our pearl tinsel and we're going to wrap that up the body with touching wraps. I 
I kind of use my finger just to hold it there so it doesn't, it's not going anywhere. And once we get to that, we're going to tie that off. And trim that. Okay. All right. Now we're going to use our quill body. And we're going to space these wraps on that pearl flash. So it kind of just peeks through right on the bottom. Just like that. And we're going to tie that off. And trim that. A little bit of a tag end. Awesome. So here's when we put in our dubbing loop. And for the dubbing that I like to use, it is a squirrel dub with just a little bit of like gold flash pattern in it. It kind of pops. And with this stuff, I like to just kind of trim the edges off and you're going to use that stuff when you do your next dubbing loop so you're not wasting it. But I don't want a crazy long collar. You want it to look buggy, um, but you don't want it to cover most of that flash and the quill body. And once we have it right about there, we're gonna do one more. I always like to do more than less, just to be safe. Once we got that, we're gonna dub this up. And once we have that, we are going to wrap this dubbing collar right up the top. I like to kind of push it back. Kind of just like that. Make it look pretty bushy. We're going to tie that off. Trim that off right there. So, pull it back, get some good tight wraps. And whip finish. And the last thing we're gonna do, and you can do this before you put on this dubbing loop, which I usually do, but I forgot. <laughs> so no, we're gonna do it now. <laughs> yeah. So we are gonna put some UV on that so it shines without getting all the hair. So, 
And hit that. And that is it. That is the caddis. And you can brush that out if you want to. Um, sometimes I like it just like that. But it seems like it gets messy once it's fished anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But yeah. And that is it. There you go. I fish that honestly in the summertime the most, like here in town. Um, and then, you know, I have done well with it at Paco too before, but that higher flows. And then the Gunnison, and it's just a great caddis pattern for all around. It's shiny. It kind of has that same thing with the Pertagon, where it grabs their attention. So. Yes. Yep. I know. Yeah. But he catches fish, so I. Exactly. Yeah, every once in a while. You just give them what they want, you know? Exactly. <laughs> give them what they want. Any other questions? That dubbing, uh, do you mix that dubbing yourself? I don't. I bought it um, not here, which is bad. But I think I bought it in Denver okay. um, from Charlie Craven's shop. Yeah. And I think it's a squirrel dub um, with just some flash mixed in it and all that. Gold flash. It really, really has a sparkle. Yeah, it does. When you get it in the sun, it's, I'm surprised. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look like much when you're putting no. it on, but you get right. it in the sunlight and it's like, wow. Yeah, it's sweet. All right. good okay awesome all right so for this next fly i'll be tying it is the sinister stone um and i created this pattern to fish it mainly in town um, just to have a littler stone fly to fish during the colder months um i haven't really fished it in the summertime yet i actually just kind of recently came up with it but it does work really good in town and um Caught some nice fish on it the last couple weeks. So we're gonna start this off with a, another fire hole. This is a 718 and then a size 18. Um, so again, it's a little bit bigger. It's kind of more like a 16, but I like it in this size a lot. I have tied it in one size bigger and it did just fine, but this size seems to match the exact size of the little stones that we get here in town through this time. And then it's actually the exact same bead. It is the Firehold Midnight Green bead again in a 2.5. I really like this bead. When you hit it with that UV light, it pops with those green little sparkles. So um, just a little added bonus. So for our thread, we're gonna be using another UTC 70 denier in brown. Um, you can tie this pattern in f four different colors, including olive, um, black, brown as what we're doing and golden it looks really good with a golden but this is my go-to color for here in town so so we're going to start our thread off and we are going to make our way right down to that bend
and we're going to take some goose biot in dark brown. And you're probably not going to see it because I block it with my big fingers. But I'm going to tie two of these in as the tail. Really the legs, but same thing. And when you're tying these in, um, I'm guessing most of you know this, but the goose biots are pointed, you know, kind of like at an upward ang angle. You want those to be pointed up on this pattern every time we tie those in. And most importantly, you want them close to the same length. So it's not crazy bad. If they're not, I doubt the fish is really looking at it and making sure, but we always try to do our best. So. Once we are done with that, we're going to go kind of back to the two thirds point. This kind of came in sideways. That's okay. And. We are going to get some micro tubing. This micro tubing is in the color pheasant tail, which I like for the brown. But I also like the olive brown color as well for most of the colors. And we're going to do that same exact trick that Caleb taught us of kind of leaving a little bit of extra right there. Then once we got that pretty dang down, we're going to pull it tight and we are going to tie it down to those biots. And back up. We're going to pull that tight and trim it. Just like that. Now we are going to take wraps up the body with this micro tubing, creating the body. Are you leaving any space or are you doing touching turns? Touching turns. Okay. Yes, sir. Tie that off. Awesome. So for this next part, we're going to build our thorax. And the first thing we're going to add in is this Vivic, Vivis holographic tensile in orange, and it's a size small. You're going to cut just enough for you to work with. And the most important thing is when you tie this in, you want to make sure that you tie it right straight on the back. You don't want to do it on either side. Because we are going to pull this tinsel over eventually. And we're going to try to pull this back. Awesome. Just like that. And we're going to cover a little bit of that micro tubing just to make enough room for us to work in there. And then once we have that, we're going to tie on our thin skin. I'm using like a burnt orange kind of molted color, but I originally just used black. So either of those work just fine. I'm 
Caleb makes fun of me for cutting the paper and the thin skin. I do the same thing. Yeah. It's a comfort thing. Doesn't make it right, but I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and once we got that. It's easier for us with fat fingers to get it off. It is. All right, All right. Yeah, that makes sense. And again, when we're tying this in, you want to make sure it's pretty much right on the top. Because we're going to pull that over eventually. So, now we're just using ice stub and peacock. Um, I've never put a different color on this fly, mainly just because I think this one looks really good. That's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. So, I barely grabbed like any right here. Like, I don't know if they can see that. A wisp. Yeah, that's it. Just a little, little amount. We're going to dubby noodle that right on our thread. And all we're going to do is we're just going to build a little kind of thick spot just right behind here. And that looks good to me. Now we are going to take more of our goose biot. We're going to add in some legs. Again, we want these to be sticking out. I'm gonna tie the one that's closest to me in first, because I think it's easier. And it's okay if these are crazy long, I don't think the fish cares. You just don't want them to be uneven. I like to just pinch them at the same time, tie those things right in, really make sure they're in there. Trim that off, and that's what we have right now. Now we're going to add more of our eye stub, fill in that empty gap. Again, not a whole bunch. You do want to make it somewhat bulky. Add a little bit more. Awesome. It might look really buggy right now, but that's okay. So now we're going to take this thin skin and we're going to pull it over the top. I like to pinch it, get it right there, make some tight turns. And then, I like to just kind of nick the side of that. I think one of you taught me that, but yeah. And you're good from there. And then if you have anything left, you can trim that right out. So at that point, thin skin's over. Now we're just gonna take that tinsel and we're gonna put it right straight over the middle. Just gives it a little bit of flash. And then we will whip finish and add our epoxy. Awesome. I can see why you'd fish that in wintertime. Yeah. Then we're going to whip finish. I had to cut that off. And then obviously we're going to trim the 
ridiculously long hairs, but I do like it to leave like a little bit of bugginess um, on the bottom, but I try to keep none on the top. So, looks like we got one little one. Just like that. Now we are gonna add our UV right on the top. Again, we don't want a lot just to really pick up that flash. And we're gonna get these air bubbles off. Kinda like that. I'm gonna turn it towards me so you guys can't see it. Cause that's how I am. And just like that, we're gonna tip that upside down. Grab our light, be more prepared next time. And hit that with our UV light. You can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the bead really pops when you hit it with that UV light. And now at the very end, I kind of like to flare those tails out. These tails kind of did come in a little bit sideways, but that's okay. So, we'll take that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's for it from here. Oh, it's beautiful. The orange really, really gives it some shot. Yeah. And and you're right about the green and the bead. Man, that, when you get some UV light on it, it mm -hmm. really jumps. Yeah, it does, yeah. I'm surprised. It is awesome. Huh? Yeah. Ready? Hey, great. The, can you see how that bead pops? Yeah. Great job, Preston. Yeah, really, Thank you. Really hey, we're going to do a, a short Q&A again from the floor. So does anybody have any questions on the floor or anybody have any questions online? Just comment your, put, put your questions in the comment and we'll respond. We're going to take a few minutes. What all colors do you tell in? Uh, olive, black, the golden, and the brown. So what's the history on the name for that caddis? The Sinister Stone? No, the caddis. Oh, the caddis? Oh. Yeah, our friend from Arkansas would like to know. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, Jurassic Park was always one of my favorite movies. Okay. And uh, I name a lot of my flies after movies that I enjoy. So I mainly named it after that. But you can also name it because you can tie it in a size 12. And it's very big and it flashes and it's really good looking. We so. thought for sure it was because of the big fish you catch. Yeah, I don't know about that, but. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Ted Four. <laughs> Just for you, buddy. We miss you. Someone wants to see it. Someone wants to see it in here? here? Yeah, throw it in the vine. What's that? The stone or the caddis? Um, uh, probably. The stone. Let's yeah, get the stone, stone first. Any more questions, guys? Hey, I got one. It seems like you guys exclusively are using fire hole hooks. Yeah. Is that just coincidental? For the patterns that you did today, or um, I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of them when I started, but um, they have got a lot better. Um, and they're strong hook, they're barbless, and you get 36 for eight bucks, so it's better than the ethical prices, right. and you're getting a high quality hook. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I, I figured there had to be some reason. I had never thought about it. Yeah. That's good sense. Yeah. 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 And I have Preston, do you have anything else about Firehole? Uh, it's the same reason. We have a lot of them here, so I never have to worry about running out of them. Right. And um, they're a really good Christian company, and I think that's cool too. So. Yeah. 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 There's a little Bible verse, a little Bible verse on the back of their boxes. So True. that's cool. Yeah. I want to see the oh, the cows? Okay. They are a tremendous hook. Yeah. 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 Just jump through one hook. Yeah. No, I've been using them. And again, when they first started, I was a little leery. And, and I got a couple of, of things that were not quite right. But since then, they've 
really stepped up their game. They're awesome. Yeah. They're, they're they, tough for service as well, too. It's yeah. a problem. They're still 50 out of a few clocks. And their first batch was a little iffy, um, but lately it's been consistent. Yeah, I got them when they were on Kickstarter. Oh, really? And, and you know, but they've done really well. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm tickled with them. Yeah. Out of Bozeman, Montana. Well, that's another good husband, husband and wife yeah. running their yeah. show. Well, yeah, and their service is great. I'm sorry. For a guy starting out, you tell them like Do you want me to put Caleb's on there too? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. 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 The, yeah, the hooks we carry predominantly in the shop are Umpqua, uh, Firehole, and we have some Montana fly, flies as well. But I would say our, our greatest selection is Firehole and Umpqua. So, um, and um, yeah, I, I, for, I, not being a tire, but I affirm the quality and the service because I deal with those guys and um, good people. Good folks. Well, so. you know, the, the thing is to me is what works with the fish. Right. And, and I've not had any issues with what works with the fish. What size is that? What size is it? It's tied in a 16, but it's really a little bigger than that because it's a fire hole. And, and that's another good thing I like yeah. about fire holes. Everybody else is smaller. Right, so yeah, yeah. True. True. For the size, so you say, okay, I tied a size 20. You're actually tying maybe an 18. Right. Fits right in with Fisherman's Lodge. Any questions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It falls right in with my line. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Give me close. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for coming today. It's been great. And, um, uh, I want to give out before everybody leaves and signs off a couple special thanks. First uh, and foremost to Drew Lowen Creative, very talented. If you guys have any video projects uh, of any kind, um, he's creative, he's professional, and he's great to work with and um, just flat great to work with. Secondly, I want to give a shout out to Jeff Dean. I don't know where Jeff's at, but Jeff put a lot of effort and time into uh, help organize this. And, um, and in closing, hey, if, if you enjoyed it, I ask you to subscribe, get links for uh, reminders of our, our time next week, uh, as we'll have Jordan Haran on the vice, and he's going to share with us some of his secrets. So, um, again, just um, hit subscribe and hit, hit, hit the like button if you like it. So, hey, until then, tight lines until next week. Thank you. Thanks, friends. Yep. <laughs>